Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Our first story of a road accident, justice was served in the end. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Our first story. I was victim of a hit and run. I received threats because of it, and I got my revenge. It was September 2011, and I was driving my Nissan in a quiet residential area. I approached an intersection that was rather notorious for people disregarding the stop sign. I have the right of way, as streets going either north or south usually do. I was going 40 kilometers per hour, and I look right as I'm about to cross the intersection, and I see a big Mercedes SUV hauling butt just meters away from the intersection, easily 60 to 70 kilometers per hour. I see a cell phone by her ear. She sees my car and brakes to around 30 to 40 kilometers per hour. Crash. My car even hit the sidewalk with enough force to lift the entire right side away from the ground. I'm shocked and a little bruised and literally crying 10 seconds after the crash. I love my car. She drives away 10 seconds later. As a first but small victory for me, a cab driver that saw the crash can be seen on the far right edge after the crash turns around and chases her and brings her back. My family and some friends arrive to help me, uncles or lawyers, while the cop and respective insurance lawyers sort everything out. This lady driving the Mercedes and her husband threaten us. You're going to be screwed out of insurance. Watch your bank accounts, etc. The traffic cop was bribed by them. We saw her husband giving him money and drew the accident sketch incorrectly. My uncles not so kindly proceeded to point out this error Sketch is corrected, and they didn't like that we noticed. Second victory. Cop asks both parties to sign off on the report. I don't sign it. You'll know why. We leave. My car was towed as it was undrivable, and her car was never even present at the scene of the accident after the accident itself. Fast forward two days later. A friend suggests, you know, the building in front of where you crashed has to have surveillance footage. Bingo. Third victory. We go, ask, get the video, and take it to her insurance and our insurance company. Now, the reason I didn't sign the accident report was because in her statement, she claimed I was speeding, going the wrong way, and that I attacked her car. Lying to the insurance company is grounds for cancellation. On top of that, my dad found out both cars they had, the Mercedes and the BMW, are leased. My dad is friends with the owner of the lease company. He handed over everything. A week later, we get the call that they took both cars back because they were used. Fourth victory. A month after the accident, I get my car back as good as new. The cost of repair was greater than the value of the car. Biggest victory. But it was fixed because my dad is also friends with the owner of Nissan in Colombia. He told the insurance company, friends as well, don't let this car get totaled. He loves his car. P.S. We also investigated them Got their address, names, what they do for a living, everything. Long story short, they've stolen a lot of money from the state thanks to shady businesses they run. And our next story. Stick me with your work. Enjoy getting stuck unemployed. Around eight years ago, I applied for a job working for a relatively small organization as a manager. Instead of the position I applied for, they offered me a different job reporting to the person they hired for the management position Still a step up in my career, but not quite as good. I accepted the job and soon after was invited out to dinner to meet my new manager. Let's call her Sarah. I immediately became skeptical of Sarah. She presented as a devout Christian woman while throwing shade at her previous co-workers and jobs, all of which raised alarms in my mind. I resigned myself to being polite, but distant from her rather than running away as fast as I could because I figured I might have the wrong idea about her. Yeah, not so much. As soon as we started working together, she started pawning off much of her work on me. She hated making phone calls, which she was required to make, so I got stuck with those. She wouldn't return messages from clients, so I ended up doing that too. The organization was small and had a serious resource shortage, something which was made worse by some recent system changes that were made right around the time we arrived. Her shirking was positioned as delegation since she was dealing with fixing those systems issues. The higher-up saw it as a temporary issue and implored me to be cooperative. Soon I was working 60 hours a week trying to keep up with the workload. 
I got paid overtime, but no amount of money can make up for constantly being thrown under the bus by your incompetent boss because I couldn't handle the workload I was being asked to manage. Nobody could. When she would actually get called on the carpet for mistakes and issues, she would yell and scream at me while simultaneously blaming me for the problem she caused. Meanwhile, she was having long conversations with anyone who wandered past her doorway, leaving at four every day with no overtime and smiling that self-righteous smile of the oblivious sociopath. I think she truly thought she was a great and successful manager. I will point out that the people in upper management clearly noticed that something was up with the work in our department. A year had passed and things weren't getting better. They were actually worse on my end since now I was so demoralized that I had cried a couple of times at work. Thus, they didn't pay much attention when I pointed out that our workloads were inequitable and that I was basically working both of our jobs, mine and Sarah's, without the appropriate tools since Sarah hadn't actually fixed the system issues she'd been hired to manage. Other people in the organization didn't really understand the system issues because they never had to use the system. Revenge I finally decided that I was finished dealing with Sarah and needed to demonstrate the dysfunction to the higher-ups. I waited for Sarah to take a week of vacation and then promptly called in sick for two days once she was gone, leaving the higher-ups to try to handle the client issues for those two days. I didn't answer any calls from the office during working hours, despite having some frantic, how the hell do I do what the client is asking me to do messages. Instead, I waited until after hours, claimed to have been sleeping due to medication, and then left long messages detailing the convoluted processes of how the system worked, or didn't. I took the time to work on my resume and write up my resignation letter, including an offer to stay for up to two months to facilitate a transition. I didn't bear the lower-tiered work, and the money would be helpful if I could have a set date in mind, so I felt okay with a longer notice period. I arrived back at work after my illness and had three of the higher-ups walk straight into my office, shut the door, and sit down. What the F is going on here? Was the first thing that came tumbling out of the general manager's mouth. So I spent a good 10 minutes detailing the system issues, reminding them that I had consistently mentioned being overworked and not having the tools to do my job. Apparently Sarah, unbeknownst to me, had been bad-mouthing me to all of them, calling me incompetent and slow. Once they told me that, I said I found that surprising since she had spent all of that time bad-mouthing the system to me and calling the management incompetent. One of the other managers told me they were attributing the problems to me and my emotional state and now realized after just two days of trying to do my job just how awful things really were. They apologized to me for doubting my claims and vowed to make changes. I thanked them and handed them my resignation notice, telling them that I had decided to go back to school to pursue a new career and couldn't do that while working for or with Sarah. Over the next two months before I finally left, Sarah basically became a woman defeated. I fed them every nasty word she said for two months, including showing them some text messages I received in which she badmouthed the organization. The GM told me they couldn't fire her because anyone knew would be even worse with the system, but that they were taking steps to cross-train others on the system in order to be able to get rid of her. They removed me from her control, allowing me to return her delegated work and insist she do it herself. We had long meetings about systems issues, during which she was left looking like a bumbling incompetent. After I finally left, they had a little party for me, they called her into the GM's office and read the riot act to her for basically chasing me out the door and costing the organization a strong employee. Their words, not mine. Sarah contacted me after being told off and expressed how sad she was that I would say such things. I denied using the words they claimed I used, saying only that I talked about the circumstances and not the people. I lied purposefully in the faint hope that it would be useful to me in the future. I had no great love for the management of the organization, despite their recent attempts to make amends, and it cost me little to play both sides. Her reputation was so bad at that point that nobody would believe her if she said I stuck up for her. It wound up being a good instinct. They fired her three months later and told her not to use them as a reference. She has basically been stuck in a series of temporary and low-paying jobs ever since she left. We're still social media friends, and I've seen her messages about looking for help from God and tough financial times. As much as I want to feel bad for her, I can't muster up even a little bit of concern for her. 
Instead, I enjoyed a little private laugh at every bad thing that seemed to happen to her. Call me a jerk, but I view her as someone who tried to destroy my career to save herself some work. And our last story. Yes, sir. I will always lock your door. This happened last week. I work security through a private company contracted to a large corporation. Security is very strict here. Once 5 p.m. rolls around, it's everyone out and the building is on lockdown. The evening officer, me today, locks up each individual office and room, and the morning shift will come through and unlock everything before the day starts. This relates to the story, trust me. One of the managers comes into my office and tells me that he has several meetings yet today and he will be staying late. I ask if he needs the conference room unlocked and he says, no, I will be in my office. Okie dokie, boss. Fast forward, when I'm making my rounds and locking the place up, I leave his office unlocked. He's still using it, though not in at the moment. And if I did lock it, I would have to leave my post later to unlock it again to let him in. A booming voice comes over my radio not even five minutes later asking me to come to his office. There, standing at the threshold, is my idiot boss, who I may mention has a habit of messing with officers and really doesn't like us in several suits. Boss man is yelling, nearly in my face, about why his door is unlocked and asking what kind of outfit I'm running. He's going on and on, and I'm starting to think it's just to look powerful in front of his guests. After his rant, I reply, copy that, I will now always, always lock your door. And I walk off. Next hour, I come through, boss man is in his office with his guests, I walk up to the door, loudly stuck in my key, and lock it. No eye contact, nothing, just doing my job. I then proceeded to do this for another four hours, every meeting, loud key banging, and door locking mid-meeting. Of course he complained, but I recorded my orders to a T in my records for the night, and hey man, I have to provide good service for the client. To those who keep saying I'll be fired, it's not a week. I've been cleared by HR. This guy is not liked around the offices and has a tendency to overreact. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.